New findings out tonight show the main cause of the climate crisis is rapidly getting worse. There's a definite trend. Glaciers melting, you know, in certain areas a lot and, and actually fading away over time. We are making these changes happen very quickly and in ways that, that in geologic time we have not seen before. So if we cannot figure out a way to gracefully make that transition, then nature will take care of it for us. And that's an enormous job. It may be an impossible one, but it's definitely the one to which we are called at the moment. What we believed and what I still believe is that demonstrating that people can take meaningful action regardless of their political beliefs was critically important to giving everybody the sense that this was a problem that could be solved. The work done in Kansas City has been valid, bold, and commendable. But due to the daunting challenges we face, it is by no means sufficient. And that is why we are all here together today. And we had nearly 700 people attend. Um, it was positive, it was energetic. Um, and then from there, we embarked on that regional climate action plan um, that we did with Mid-America Regional Council. And so we're looking for strategies to deal with and when it gets a lot hotter, when it's wetter, when it's drier. That's all in the climate adaptation side of the plan, thinking about how do we adapt to the, the new conditions that we might expect to see. As we're becoming more aware of the local impact of climate change and beginning to do something about it, younger generations feel an even greater urgency to respond. We know what we're going up against, and we know like this is what's gonna happen in our lifetimes. Like ice caps are gonna melt, sea levels are gonna rise. That's big changes. It is deeply distressing that though the effects of climate change are already happening, alarming numbers of adults refuse to acknowledge the problem. Perhaps the issue still seems theoretical to them. My older son was an environmental activist and had, uh, was working on his master's degree in urban and regional planning, and we lost him in 2003 to suicide. And our mission really is to help support people as we navigate climate change. Sunlight, sunlight, all of those relatives, all of that life, those gifts that we're surrounded with. In my book, Red Alert, I made the argument that I'm all for climate change, a cultural climate change. The psychologist in me says some of the divisiveness in our culture uh, may be being driven by a different anxiety than the topic of the, of the debates. I mean, as a species, we're facing severe impingements from climate change on everything about the way we live. Earth stewardship, another way to talk about it, and care of creation, I think is actually less polarized than many things. That people of um, both and all political parties, many are engaged. Talk a little bit about the role of the prairie in terms of carbon sequestration, because I know that's an, an issue that folks talk about. Yeah, yeah. For the intact native prairies, they, they're storing, almost all the carbon is stored below ground. In fact, if you burn a prairie, the carbon that's above ground is released in the smoke back to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. And some people ask, well, is, is that a good or bad thing? Aren't you, aren't you just releasing all the carbon above ground? But what you have to remember is that burning the prairie increases productivity in the subsequent year. It increases the growth of the plants both above and below ground. But there's still a Keystone Pipeline that comes through central Kansas and it bursts, releasing hundreds of thousands of gallons of this bitumen in farmland in north central Kansas. They claim that everything's been cleaned up, but I know that they were very interested in keeping things kind of quiet. It speaks to a larger issue. The more we rely on extreme forms of energy, using these tar sands, piping these tar sands across the country, the more dangerous it is. People didn't know a lot. Um, as I say, climate change was not a familiar terminology. Even the notion that air pollution directly affected your health wasn't familiar, but we have this possibility of dirtier air and more unclean air and more carbon in the air or this amazing natural resource. The key message here is that there is an opportunity to do renewable energy right and 
by identifying areas where there's going to be less conflict, uh, it could actually accelerate the development of renewable energy. So our goal is not to be you know, a roadblock to, to the development of renewable energy. We want to see more renewable energy developed, but we want to see it done in a responsible way. You know, hydropower plants are a lot like farmers. So we know that we're going to have good years and bad years. And so anytime we have a good year, we're socking away as much as we possibly can so that we can bridge years when we don't have as good of flows in the Kansas River. Unfortunately, we're at a point right now where so much of our civic discourse is avoided because we allow people to think too binary. Are you Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal? These things don't shake out on a clean political spectrum because people realize the connections, that climate change is not something that's gonna happen over there or in the future. It is right here, right now. The here and now of climate change is becoming more apparent throughout the plains as wind-blown wildfires advance rapidly through dry vegetation and dust storms remind us of cataclysmic conditions in the hot, dry years of the dirty 30s. Farmers and ranchers and others in rural communities must contend with sporadic rainfall as droughts are punctuated with occasional heavy downpours. I think that we're in an age that we're going to have to deal with these, these extreme events. Whether we have a drought and then we have a 10-inch rainstorm event in a six-hour time period, uh, that's probably going to be our new normal. I was talking with a, a rancher down in North Texas um, very recently who had to liquidate his entire herd due to drought uh, up there. And then wildfires are also impacting those communities. We had some bad wildfires here in Kansas last summer. And then my previous stop in Colorado, we had wildfires there too. So drought and wildfires and water savings, that's what producers are asking about. Come along with us on this journey as we explore the impact of climate change on our part of the Great Plains, looking at what's being done to help deal with the challenges posed by increasing temperatures and extreme weather events. We're facing some hot times in the heartland. You might want to sit up and take note as we hear from some of the folks most tuned in to what's happening. <laughs>